This is the Magic Treehouse Research Guide number one. This is Dinosaurs. This is written by Will Osborne and Mary Pope Osborne. This is the nonfiction companion to Dinosaurs Before Dark. And this is read by Mr. Horton. Dear readers, we learned a lot about dinosaurs when we went back in time in Dinosaurs Before Dark. When we came home to Frog Creek, we learned even more. We went to the library. We went to the museum. We checked the internet. We were doing research. Research is like digging for dinosaur bones. You know where to look, but you never know exactly what you're going to find. In our research, we found a lot. We found dinosaur books, dinosaur pictures, and dinosaur videos. We talked to dinosaur experts. We touched dinosaur skeletons. We collected lots and lots of amazing dinosaur facts. In this book, we're going to share some of our research with you. So get your notebook, get your backpack, and get ready to visit the most amazing creatures that ever lived. Jack and Annie. <clears throat> Chapter 1. A World of Dinosaurs. Long ago, the world was very different than it is now. Today, all the land on Earth is divided into seven continents. Millions of years ago, there was just one continent. Scientists have named that ancient continent Pangaea. Some parts of Pangaea were very dry, like deserts. Other parts were damp and rainy, like swamps. Take a look on this side of the page. A continent is one of the Earth's large land masses. There were forests and jungles, plains and mountains, rivers and lakes, and there were dinosaurs almost everywhere. Dinosaurs were on Earth for over 160 million years. Not all the dinosaurs in this picture were on Earth at the same time. Some dinosaurs were bigger than buildings. Others were as small as ducks. Some dinosaurs walked on four legs like dogs. Others walked on two legs like people. Some dinosaurs had many rows of sharp teeth. Others had no teeth at all. But in some ways, all dinosaurs were alike. They were all reptiles. They all lived on land, and they all laid eggs. They almost all had scaly skins. None of them had fur or hair, and none of them could fly. Dinosaurs. Reptiles lived on land, laid eggs, scaly skin, no fur, couldn't fly. Take a look on the left side of the page. Reptiles are cold-blooded, usually scaly skin animals. Snakes, turtles, and lizards are reptiles. The age of reptiles. Scientists believe that the first dinosaur was born over 225 million years ago. They believe that the last dinosaurs died about 65 million years ago. That means there were dinosaurs on Earth for more than 160 million years. All the dinosaurs lived during what is known as the Mesozoic Era. Scientists also call this time the Age of Reptiles or the Age of Dinosaurs. Scientists divide the Mesozoic Era into three parts, or periods. The first is the Triassic period. The middle is the Jurassic period. The last is the Cretaceous period. Different kinds of animals lived in each period. The ones we know best today live during the Jurassic or Cretaceous periods. That's over 60 million years before the first human was born. So how can we know, that di how can we know about dinosaurs if no human has actually ever seen one? We know about them because they left their bones and their teeth and their footprints all over the world. Take a look at the timeline at the bottom of these two pages. The Triassic period, 251 to 203 million years ago. The Solephysis, the Eoraptor, the dawn of dinosaurs. The Jurassic period, 203 to 146 million years ago. Stegosaurus, Diplodocus. The Cretaceous period, 146 to 65 million years ago. The Iguanodon, the Tyrannosaurus rex, and then the first humans about 200,000 years ago, Jack and Annie. <clears throat> Chapter 2, Fossils. When people find dinosaur bones today, they aren't really finding bones, they're finding fossils. Sometimes a dinosaur died near a stream or river. If the stream or river overflowed, the dinosaur's body would be covered by mud and sand. Over millions of years, the mud and sand turned into solid rock, and the dinosaur's skeleton was still inside. Take a look at the bottom of the page. T-Rex fossil found in Montana. And on the right side of the page, fossils are any traces of life from a long-ago age. 
take a look at the left side of the page. Minerals are natural substances in the earth that do not come from plants or animals. At the same time, water in the earth seeped into the dinosaur bones. Minerals in the water turned the bones into stone, too. So a dino dinosaur fossil is really a rock that used to be a bone buried inside of another rock that used to be some mud and sand. This is a model of a dinosaur that died at the bottom of a river. Fossils can tell us a lot about dinosaurs. Fossil teeth can tell us about the kind of food a dinosaur might have eaten. Flat teeth are good for chopping up plants. Sharp pointed teeth are good for ripping flesh. Fossil leg bones can tell us how a dinosaur might have walked. Long, di long leg bones are good for fast running. Short thick leg bones mean the dinosaur probably moved slowly. Footprint fossils can help us guess how much a dinosaur weighed. Deep footprints mean the dinosaur who made them must have been very heavy. Shallow footprints mean the dinosaur must have been a lightweight. Foot footprint fossils can even tell us how, take a look at the right side of the page real quick, people used to call anything that was dug out of the ground a fossil, even potatoes. Dinosaurs traveled. Many footprints going the same way mean the dinosaurs were probably moving in packs or herds. Big footprints inside little footprints mean that the dinosaurs may have been traveling with their families. Everything we know about dinosaurs we know from fossils. But fossils can only give us clues about dinosaurs in the age of reptiles. We have to use our imaginations to picture how these amazing creatures really looked, how they lived, and how they died. Sets of dinosaur footprints going the same way like these are called trackways. Dinosaur Babies <clears throat> Fossils can even tell us about dinosaur eggs, dinosaur nests, and dinosaur babies. Some dinosaurs laid their eggs in a circle like this. Dinosaur eggs are usually found in nests, but dinosaur nests are not like birds' nests. Most dinosaur nests were dug into sand or mud. Scientists believe that some dinosaurs return to the same nesting grounds year after year. The biggest dinosaur egg fossils ever found are about the size of a football, but the mother dinosaur had laid them was almost 40 feet long. Why did huge dinosaurs lay small eggs? Scientists think that if dinosaur eggs had been even bigger, the shells would have been too thick for baby dinosaurs to break out of. He's so cute. Chapter 3, Dinosaur Hunters. The first people who discovered dinosaur fossils didn't know what they were. The ancient Chinese thought they came from skeletons of dragons. Native, Amer Native Americans thought they came from giant snakes. Other people who found fossils thought they came from very large elephants or even giant humans. In 1822, an English couple named Mary Ann and Gideon Mantell found some large fossil teeth near their home. Gideon took the fossils to a museum and looked at them next to teeth from other animals. Gideon didn't see any teeth that were like the fossils he and Marianne had found. He decided that the fossils had belonged to an animal that didn't live on earth anymore. Gideon thought the fossil teeth looked most like giant iguana teeth, so he called the animal they came from an iguanodon. About the same time, a professor in England named, the William, Buckland, named William Buckland was studying the fossil of a very large jawbone. Dr. Buckland decided that this fossil was also from an animal that no longer lived on earth. Go ahead and look at the left side page of um, page 30. An iguana is a large South American lizard. He called the creature it came from the Megalosaurus. That means big lizard in Greek. This is a Megalosaurus jawbone fossil. Big lizard, big teeth. Nearly 20 years later, an English scientist named Richard Owen studied the iguanodon and the Megalosaurus fossils. He could tell that the bone that both these creatures were totally different from any animals still living on Earth. He decided that creatures like these should have a special name. Richard Owen chose the name that means terrifying lizards in Greek. The name was dinosaurs. After these early fossil discoveries, people became very interested in dinosaurs. Scientists wanted more fossils to study. Museums wanted dinosaur skeletons to put on display. There is a race to find more bones. <clears throat> now look at the bottom of the page. How dinosaurs get their names. Dinosaur hunters use Latin and Greek words to make up names for the different kinds of dinosaurs they discover. Some are named for the place where they are found. Alamosaurus fossils were found near the Alamo in Texas. Some are named after the person who discovered them. Marsosaurus was named after Othoniel Charles Marsh, a famous dinosaur hunter. Some are named for the way they looked. Corythosaurus means helmet lizard. Corythosaurus. 
Silly source. The Bone Wars. Scientists who study fossils are called paleontologists. Two of the most famous paleontologists were Othniel, Othniel uh, Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope. They both were Americans who started hunting for fossils in the 1870s. Marsh and Cope were so eager to find new fossils that they became enemies. They hid their discoveries from each other. They sent spies into each other's camps. They even tried to steal each other's bones. These two dinosaur hunters fought for 20 years, but their bone battles led to the discovery of more than 130 different kinds of dinosaurs. This is a Triceratops fossil, discovered during the Bone Wars. Over the last 100 years, people have hunted for dinosaurs all over the world. Dinosaur fossils have been found on every continent and in almost every country. Each time a dinosaur hunter digs up a fossil, we learn a little more about the age of dinosaurs. Here are some bone hunting tools. Dinosaur hunters use a lot of tools. Here are some things they always take along when they go digging for fossils. A camera to take pictures of the site and the fossils. Magnifying glass to examine small fossils like teeth. Tape measure and ruler to measure the size of the bones. Field notebook to keep a record of the bones. A hammer, chisel, and pick to chip away at the rock around the fossils. Safety goggles. A water bottle. Work gloves. Sample bags to collect rock samples and broken fossil pieces. Brush to brush away dust and dirt. Bone hunter mistakes. Even famous dinosaur hunters sometimes goof. The name game. For many years, people visited museums to see a dinosaur called the Brontosaurus. Brontosaurus. But Brontosaurus was really the wrong name for this dinosaur. In the late 1800s, a dinosaur hunter put the skull and some of the other bones of a Camarasaurus on the skeleton of an Apatosaurus. He named his mixed-up dinosaur the Brontosaurus. It was years before anyone fixed the mistake and corrected the name back to the Apatosaurus. The Wrong End Early in his career, dinosaur hunter Edward Drinker Cope dug up the fossil bones of a giant sea reptile. When he put the bones together, he made a big mistake. He mixed up the tail bones with the neck bones, and he stuck the animal's head on the end of its tail. Horn or claw. When Gideon Mantell was studying the iguanodon fossils, he thought of one of the dinosaur's claws as a giant horn. He drew a picture of the iguanodon with its claw sticking out of its snout. The wrong robber. About 80 years ago, dinosaur hunters in Asia found the fossil of a small dinosaur near the nest full of fossilized eggs. They thought that the dinosaur was about to raid the nest, so they named it the Oviraptor, which means egg robber. But paleontologists recently, recently discovered that the Oviraptor wasn't stealing another dinosaur's eggs. It was guarding its own eggs so another dinosaur wouldn't steal them. Hands off. Chapter 4, Flesh Eaters. As dinosaur hunters dug up more and more fossils, they realized that there were hundreds of different kinds of dinosaurs. Soon they started sorting them into groups. The simplest way to sort dinosaurs is by what they ate. Some dinosaurs ate flesh. Others ate only plants. Yuck! Most people call flesh-eating dinosaurs meat eaters, but flesh eaters didn't eat just the meat. They ate everything. Brains, the bones, the guts, and even eyeballs. The Allosaurus fossil. How do we know what dinosaurs ate? Paleontologists use clues from fossils to figure out what kind of food different dinosaurs ate. Sometimes bones from another animal are found inside the fossil of a dinosaur. That means the dinosaur must have been a flesh eater. This tooth is long and pointed. It must have been a flesh eater's. Some fossil teeth are short and flat. They wouldn't have been good for ripping flesh, so the dinosaur they belong to must have been a plant eater. Sometimes a dinosaur's droppings were fossilized. If the droppings contained seeds, it means that the dinosaur was a plant eater. If they contained ground up pieces of bone, the dinosaur must have been a flesh eater. Paleontologists think that all of the very first dinosaurs were flesh eaters. The earliest dinosaur fossil ever discovered was from a flesh eater about the size of a goose. Paleontologists named this dinosaur the Eoraptor. Eoraptor means dawn robber. Eoraptor lived on Earth about 225 million years ago, at the dawn of the age of dinosaurs. Wow, Eoraptor had a little head, but look at all those teeth. Paleontologists think that Eoraptor and early, uh, other early dinosaurs probably ate insects and small lizards. 
Flesh-eating dinosaurs came in many sizes, but they all had a similar shape. Most of the flesh-eaters walked and ran on their hind legs. They usually had small arms. Most had long, strong tails. Their mouths were full of very sharp teeth. Flesh-eaters walked on hind legs, small arms, strong tails, sharp teeth. Paleontologists think that the flesh-eaters hardly ever stood up straight when they ran. They used their tails for balance and leaned very far forward, like this. And there's a T-Rex fossil at the top. Flesh-eating dinosaurs had different ways of feeding themselves. Some hunted and killed smaller dinosaurs and other animals. Animals who hunt other animals for food are called predators. The animals they hunt are called their prey. Other flesh-eating dinosaurs did not hunt on their own... They, didn't hunt, they did not hunt their own food. They lived off the leftovers of the predators. These kinds of animals are called scavengers. Flesh-eating dinosaurs roamed the earth during all three periods of the age of reptiles. They were smart. They were fierce. They were fast. They were probably the scariest creatures that ever lived. They were hundreds of kinds of flesh-eating dinosaurs. Turn the page for some of our favorites. This way. Our favorite flesh-eaters. The Coelophysis. Coelophysis. Coelophysis was one of the earliest dinosaurs. Paleontologists think light bones and long legs made the Coelophysis a very fast runner. Fossil hunters in New Mexico have found dozens of Coelophysis skeletons on a ranch called the Ghost Ranch. Some people say that every night on the Ghost Ranch, Coelophysis ghosts come out and dance. This name means hollow form. These pictures show our size next to the dinosaur's size. So the Coelophysis had good vision, jagged teeth, strong finger claws, and long, strong legs. This is the Troodon. The Troodon, paleo paleontologists believe that the Troodon was the smartest dinosaur that ever lived. Its brain was very big for the size of its body. Troodon's teeth were smaller than a human's, but they had jagged edges and very sharp points. The Troodon was fast. Paleontologists think it could run nearly 30 miles an hour. The fastest humans can only run about 23 miles per hour. This name means wounded tooth, strong grip, claws like hands, small teeth, but sharp. And at the bottom, you can see the size of Jack and Annie compared to the Troodon. The Velociraptor. The Velociraptor had a long, sharp claw on each foot. It could tuck the claw up out of the way when it ran. When it captured its prey, it could bring the claw down to attack it. In 1971, dinosaur hunters found fossils of a Velociraptor along with another dinosaur. The Velociraptor was holding the other dinosaur's skull in a tight grip. It looked like it was using a special claw to slice into the, another dinosaur's stomach. This means speedy robber. About six feet long, teeth in rows, long jaws, and special claws. And at the bottom, you can see, uh, bottom of page 54, you can see Jack and Annie compared to the size of a velociraptor. This next dinosaur is a baryonyx. Baryonyx had a snout like a crocodile's. It had twice as many teeth as most other flesh eaters, and it had a claw on each hand that was so long and sharp it was like a spear. Paleontologists think that the baronyx must have used its thumb spears to catch fish. Why? Because the first baronyx skeleton ever discovered had a half-eaten fish dinner in its stomach. This name means heavy claw, baronyx. Many teeth, long jaw, spear claws. Next up, this is a dinosaur that all of you probably know. This is the Tyrannosaurus rex. This name means Tyrant Lizard King. The T-Rex is the most famous flesh-eating dinosaur of all time. It had sharp teeth. Many, uh, many were more than six inches long. It had a head the size of a bathtub. One T-Rex mouthful of food could feed a whole family of humans for weeks. T-Rex had, had big, strong legs, but its arms were so short they couldn't even reach its mouth. Paleontologists think that T-Rex may have used its arms to help itself stand up after a nap. Powerful tail, big head, almost 20 feet tall, big mouth, big teeth, tiny arms, strong legs. Look at Jack and Annie at the bottom of page 58. That's compared to the size of the giant Tyrannosaurus Rex. This next one is the Gigantosaurus. 
So far, only one Gigantosaurus skeleton has been found, but paleontologists believe that this giant flesh eater was even bigger than the T-Rex. The Gigantosaurus name means giant lizard of the south. Big skull, big everything. Dinosaur hunters are looking for more Gigantosaurus skeletons. It's possible that when they find them, Gigantosaurus will replace T-Rex as the king of the flesh-eating dinosaurs. Look down at the page, two, uh, at the page uh, 60, at the bottom of the page. That is Jack and Annie next to the Gigantosaurus. This is a sauropod fossil. Chapter 5, Plant Eaters. The first, the fastest, and the smartest dinosaurs were flesh eaters, but the very biggest dinosaurs ate nothing but plants. The first plant-eating dinosaur appeared on Earth several million years after the first flesh eaters. Like the flesh eaters, plant eaters lived during all three periods of the age of reptiles. There were many more kinds of plant eaters than flesh eaters. Some made meals out of ferns and bushes. Others were tall enough to eat leaves from the tops of trees, but none of them hunted other animals for food. Plant eaters. Many different kinds, some very tall, some short, none hunted other animals. Plant eaters lived during all three periods of the age of dinosaurs. Not all these plant eaters lived at the same time. The biggest plant eaters were the sauropods. The sauropods left footprints as big as truck tires. They have names that mean things like monster lizards and titanic lizard. For many years, paleontologists thought that the biggest dinosaur of all time was a sauropod called Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus was as long as three school buses. But now, fossil hunters have found bones of three dinosaurs that were even bigger. The Supersaurus, which means super lizard, big. Ultrasaurus, which means extreme lizard, really big. Seismosaurus, which means earth-shaking lizard, really, really big. We don't know much about these giant sauropods because only a few of their bones have ever been found. But some paleontologists think that the seismosaurus must have been over 150 feet long, as long as six school buses. Was seismosaurus the biggest dinosaur of all? No one knows. Dinosaur hunters discover new fossils every year. It's possible that any day they'll dig up the bones of an even bigger plant. Turn the page to see some of our favorite plant eaters. This way. We're on page 68. Our favorite plant eaters. This name means roofed lizard. Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus was about the size of a minivan. It had four long spikes on the end of its tail. It had big, flat plates growing out of its back. Stegosaurus had a very small head. For many years, most books described Stegosaurus as having a brain the size of a golf ball. But paleontologists now think that Stegosaurus's brain looked more like a hot dog. There's a Stegosaurus's brain. There's a hot dog. Long tail spikes. Flat back plates. Huge body. Tiny head. If you look at the bottom of page 68, there's Jack and Annie right next to the body of a stegosaurus. The Ankylosaurus. The Ankylosaurus was about the size of an army tank and built like one. Its body and head were covered with armor. The armor was made of bone. It protected the Ankylosaurus from flesh-eating dinosaurs like T-Rex. Heavy armor. Spikes for protection. Tail club. This name, the Ankylosaurus, means fused lizard. The Ankylosaurus had a big club on the end of its tail. Paleontologists think that the Ankylosaurus used its tail club to smash the feet of legs and legs of any dinosaur that tried to attack it. Tail club. At the bottom of page 71, you can see Jack and Annie next to the Ankylosaurus. This, on page 72, is the Edmontosaurus. Edmontosaurus also used to be called the Anatosaurus. Edmontosaurus had a bill like a duck's. It also had a thousand teeth. When any of its teeth wore out, new ones grew to replace them. This name means the lizard from Edmonton. Strong legs. On the bottom of page 72, you can see the Edmontosaurus next to Jack and Annie. Paleontologists believe that the Edmontosaurus took good care of their babies. They protected their nests. They gathered food for the babies to eat. They probably looked after their babies until they were old enough to look after themselves. One thousand teeth in mouth, bill like a duck's. Triceratops. This means three-horned face. 
Triceratops had a face like a scary Halloween mask, had a beak like a parrot's, and had three long horns. The paleontologists believed that the Triceratops used their horns mostly to fight off other dinosaurs that were trying to eat them, but they also think that the, sometimes two male Triceratops would lock horns and fight with each other over a female. Three horns, neck shield called a frill, beak like a parrot's. On the bottom of page 75, you can see the Triceratops right next to Jack and Annie. This is the Diplodocus. On page 76, the Diplodocus, this name means double beam because of the shape of its bones and tail. The Diplodocus was a long, skinny sauropod. It had a long tail and a very long legs. Some paleontologists believe that the Diplodocus could balance on its back legs and its tail and stretch up to eat from the very tops of trees. The Diplodocus ate almost all the time. Its mouth was so small compared with its body that it had to take hundreds of bites to make a meal. Very long tail. On uh, 76 at the bottom, you can see Jack and Annie right next to the Diplodocus. Small head, very long neck, small mouth, strong legs. On page 78, you can see the Brachiosaurus. This is the Brachiosaurus. This name means the arm lizard, named for its long front legs. The Brachiosaurus looked a little bit like a giraffe. It had a very long neck and a small head. It had front legs that were longer than its back legs, but Brachiosaurus was twice as tall as a giraffe, and its nostrils were on the top of its head. Strong thick tail, small head, long neck, nostrils on the top of its head, long front legs. If you look at the page uh, at the bottom of page 78, right next to Jack and Annie, to the immediate left, you can see a giraffe, and then to the far left, you can see a Brachiosaurus compared to Jack and Annie. Jack and Annie's Dinosaur Hall of Fame. The biggest head, Taurosaurus. Taurosaurus was a plant eater. It had the biggest head of any known land animal that have, has ever lived. Dinosaur hunters have found Taurosaurus skulls that are over eight feet long. They think about Taurosaurus's head must have been about the, a third of the size of its whole body. If Annie's head were a third the size of her body, she would look like this. The longest neck, the Mamenchosaurus. Mamenchosaurus was also a plant eater. It had the longest neck of any of the dinosaurs. The Mementosaurus neck was almost 33 feet long. That's nearly half the length of its entire body. If Jack's neck were half the length of his body, he would look like this. This is Jack and Annie's Dinosaur Hall of Fame. The biggest eyes. The Droeciamimus Droeciamimus Mimus, was a flesh eater. It was about the size of an ostrich and had an eye and had eyeballs as big as oranges. If Annie's eyes were as big as oranges, she would look like this. The longest name, the Micropachycephalosaurus. The Micropachycephalosaurus was a small plant eater discovered in China. Its long name means tiny, micro, thick, pachy, head, cephalo, and lizard, saurus. His real name is Glasses Backpack Boy. Huh. Chapter 6. Sea Monsters and Flying Creatures. Dinosaurs ruled the earth during the age of reptiles, but they weren't the only creatures around. Dinosaur hunters have also found fossils of many strange flying and swimming reptiles that lived at the same time. Flying reptiles are called pterosaurs. Pterosaur is Greek for winged lizard. Pterosaurs had wings made of skin and bone. Each wing was attached to a very long finger. The finger stretched all the way from the pterosaur's hand to the tip of its wing. Sometimes the finger was more than 10 feet long. Paleontologists think that the pterosaurs flew by stretching out their wings and floating on the wind. This is a pterodon fa uh, fossil. Flying reptiles, pterosaurs, wings made of skin, long finger, floated on the wind. There were also several types of swimming reptiles during the age of dinosaurs. The ichthyosaurs look like big-eyed dolphins with long beaks. The mosasaurs looked like giant swimming lizards with long toes and webbed feet. The plesiosaurs did not look like anything on earth today. Some ple ple plesiosaurs had long ne short necks and long jaws like crocodiles. 
Others had long necks and small heads like a giant sauropod dinosaurs. Sea reptiles, the Ecythosaurs, Mosasaurs, Plesiosaurs, Plesiosaur fossil. Turn the page to see some of our favorite flying creatures and sea monsters in action this way. Flying creatures at the top, no teeth, big wings, stubby tail. The pterodon. The pteranodon had a long beak and a long bony crest at the back of its head. It probably needed the crest to balance its beak when it was swooping down to catch fish. This name means toothless flyer. The quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus was the largest creature that has ever flown. Its wings were about 20 feet long, as big as a small airplanes. This name means plumed serpent. serpent. Huge wings. Swimming creatures. The Ophthalmosaurus. The Ophthalmosaurus was an incythosaur with very large eyes. Paleontologists think that its big eyes help see in the dark in dark ocean water. This name means eye lizard. Big eyes. The Elasmosaurus was a plesiosaur. The Elasmosaurus's neck was made up of more than half of its entire body. Paleontologists think that the Elasmosaurus must have hunted for food by swimming around with its neck sticking out of the water, looking for fish near the surface. Small head, long neck, flippers. This name means plated lizard. Chapter 7. What happened to the dinosaurs? Dinosaurs lived on Earth for millions and millions of years. <coughs> Excuse me. Then they vanished completely. What happened? Why did they all die? No one really knows for sure. Scientists call an idea that hasn't been proved a theory. There are a few theories that can explain why dinosaurs are no longer on Earth. There is the changing climate theory. For many years, most paleontologists thought that the dinosaurs disappeared very slowly. They thought they died out because of climate changes. Paleontologists who believe this theory think that the Earth's climate began to change at the end of the age of reptiles. As the climate changed, the world of the dinosaurs changed too. Paleontologists who believe that the changing climate theory think that many of the dinosaurs couldn't adapt to the changes. They think that over the years, more and more dinosaurs died until there is none left. They had become extinct. Over on the far left, you see that a climate is the usual weather of a place. At the bottom, extinct means no longer living on Earth. The Asteroid Theory the changing climate theory was popular for a long time, but many paleontologists now have another theory. They think that the dinosaurs were wiped out much faster. Their theory is called the asteroid theory. An asteroid is a rock from outer space. Paleontologists who believe the asteroid theory think that a big asteroid hit the Earth at the end of the age of reptiles. They think the asteroid was over five miles wide. An asteroid of that size would kill all the animals within a hundred miles of where it landed. When it hit the earth, it would send a giant cloud of dust and smoke and ash flying into the air. The cloud would stay in the air for years. It would block out most of the sunlight. Wow, that's as big as a whole town! Without sunlight, the earth would get colder. Plants would die. Some dinosaurs would freeze to death. Others would starve. Soon they would all be gone. For many years, paleontologists who believed the asteroid theory wondered where the giant asteroid might have hit the earth. Now they think they might have found the spot. A crater is a dent in the earth. Scientists have discovered a crater in the Gulf of Mexico. The crater is 120 miles wide. It is buried half a mile deep in the earth under the ocean. The crater is full of the same kinds of minerals that have been found where smaller asteroids have landed. Today, most paleontologists believe the asteroid theory, but it is still just a theory. We may never know for sure why dinosaurs vanished from the earth. The death of these strange and wonderful creatures is one of the biggest mysteries of all time. Turn the page for more dinosaur mysteries. More dinosaur mysteries. Paleontologists have been studying dinosaur fossils for almost 200 years. There are some things fossils just can't tell us. Case number one, seeing red. What color were dinosaurs? Were they brown and gray? Were they bright red, green, yellow? Were they spotted? Did they have stripes? Fossils can't answer these questions, but many paleontologists think that dinosaurs may have been as colorful as today's lizards and snakes. Case number two, an age-old riddle. How many years did a dinosaur live? 10 years? 30 years? No one knows for certain. 
Many paleontologists think some dinosaurs live to be over a hundred years old. Case number three, two Don Tudors. What kind of sounds did dinosaurs make? Did they roar like lions or did they honk like geese? Hiss, chirp, growl? Paleontologists can only guess based on the shapes of the dinosaurs' heads and bodies. Some dinosaurs had bony tubes on their skulls. Paleontologists think that they may have tooted their tubes like bugles. Chapter 8. Dinosaur Neighbors Dinosaurs are no longer on Earth, but several kinds of creatures who lived among the dinosaurs are still with us. Lizards are the favorite meal of many small flesh eaters. Paleontologists think that today's lizards are almost exactly the same as the one that lived in the age of reptiles. The first turtles were also on Earth with the dinosaurs. They looked a lot like turtles today, except some were much bigger. Paleontologists that discovered the fossil of one turtle was over 12 feet long. That's a big turtle. The stupendous fossil. Crocodiles also lived during the time of dinosaurs. Most were all about the same size as crocodiles today, but dinosaur hunters have found one crocodile skull fossil in Texas more than six feet long. That means the crocodile was probably five times as big as crocodiles today. The Phobosuchus skull fossil, and as big as a crocodile. The creatures today are almost like dinosaurs, though are not like dinosaurs or turtles or crocodiles. They are small creatures you see every day. They're right outside your window and in your backyard. They're birds. Dinosaur neighbors, lizards, turtles, crocodiles, birds. Paleontologists think that the first birds appeared on Earth during the Jurassic period. They think that birds are closely related to flesh-eating dinosaurs. Some even think that there was once a creature that was half a bird and half dinosaur. In 1861, workers in Germany dug up the fossil of a small skeleton. The skeleton looked as if it belonged to a flesh-eating dinosaur. But when, it looked close, but when they looked closely at the stone around the fossilized bones, they saw imprints of feathers. The dinosaur had wings! Paleontologists named the creature the Archaeopteryx. That means ancient wing. Today, the Archaeopteryx fossil is one of the most valuable fossils in all the world. Oh man, fossil feathers! How did birds, crocodiles, turtles, and lizards stay alive when all the dinosaurs all died out? No one knows. It's another mystery of the dinosaur hunters and paleontologists of the future will have to solve. It's possible the answer is out there right now. Buried in the mud somewhere, waiting for you to dig it up. The end.